All right, folks, we're gonna continue working on this piece. I was in the middle of sketching out uh, the character on the right side here, so we're just gonna keep going. Um, if any of you want to join in on drawing here, uh, feel free to pull out your own tablet or sketchbook and go ahead and join me. Um, just focusing on the anatomy right now. Um, I just watched another video about drawing like folds and clothes and it was pretty good. Um, I might be using some of that here because this character is wearing a hoodie and this character is wearing a coat. So we will be doing some folds. Um, and another thing I realized that when, when you're drawing characters that are clothed, you don't really need to get too crazy with the anatomy. I don't know. If I'm trying to save time, I suppose I will like try to save time with, on the anatomy. So I'm um, just going to keep it as simple as I can. Uh, you know, cylindrical. And I think with anime characters, you kind of just can keep it simple and you don't really need to get, get too crazy with anatomy. Uh, as opposed to like in my religious work when I'm going to be drawing saints and um, holy figures. I mean, I want to maintain that anime style that's, uh, um, I guess, I've developed over time. But um, I do want those to be a little bit more anatomically uh, complex. So here I'm going to just move her face forward a little bit. Um, I guess get a thin neck right here. Her neck is very thin in the reference. And something's bothering me with the shape of the head. I don't know if we need like a pointier chin or um, if the cheeks are imbalanced. I might do a hor again a horizontal flip just to see what's going on. In fact, we're going to do it. Let's use it uh, liberally here. Okay, I think I see one problem already that the top of the cranium is like asymmetrical. And I think the center line needs to come forward a bit this way. Honestly, flipping horizontally it lets me see so many things that I wasn't seeing that I should just do it like liberally. I know I do. I did it on Krita. I, I had the flip horizontally set to the M, uh, the letter M on the keyboard. Procreate is not really good about um, keyboard shortcuts. I think if I, if I could give Pro, Procreate feedback, I guess, I mean, it wouldn't serve all their customers because... Um, not all the customers use keyboards with the iPad, but I think it would be really good if you can have like every single letter like bindable to some kind of um, command. Uh, and I know Krita can do that uh, for the most part. Um, I know Photoshop can do that for the most part. Um, honestly, I have so much after going to Procreate, which is like you know one of the most mi widely used um, art tools because it's so intuitive um, and so simple for. Um, uh, artists and it, it costs what like really cheap um, I mean I admire Krita so much for being available for Mac and Windows for free um, and I used it for a bunch of years and I can do pretty much anything I need on it uh, the only thing that would happen was that it would crash sometimes so what I'm seeing right now is that the position of the neck was a little bit weird with the center line so I think that's what's happening too I might move this face over this way and maybe change the angle of the head again so Maybe move it a little this way, move it a little that way. But I move the neck, but I think I want to move just the head just a little bit this way, like that. And also, too, the um, shoulder's not coming out far enough, so I might move this hand, whole arm. I think I was trying to force it into the frame, but there's going to be a little bit more um, space uh, towards the shoulder. I might have moved it a little bit much there, so we'll grab it again, rotate it a little bit, put it right around here. And I think the deltoid muscle is a little bit too close too. So we're just gonna keep playing with that until I feel like I got it right. Um, I think we need a longer, a longer bicep too. So it's okay if I just move the arm out of the frame there. And then really get a, um, a lean back here on the, on the anatomy. So here's the, uh, I don't remember the names of these muscles. Okay, let's not overcomplicate anatomy too. We're, we're working with some anime characters wearing coats, so it doesn't have to be crazy. Um, chest, simple. So we'll just keep it like that. Keep it really simple. I think that might be too much arch in the back. So I might, again, mess with the head and neck a little bit. We might angle the whole thing a little bit downward. I want to keep it dynamic, but not go overboard on some of the... 
want to make this sure the proportions are pretty much the same between the characters. Of course, big heads, thin necks. Okay, so thin torso here. We'll start widening the hips about right here. Now, for this character at the bottom, I do want to show like the at least the bottom of the uh, um, the hoodie, and then um, show that it transitions into pants. So I think we'll do that here. Um, try to find the pelvis. Again, I'm, I use really sketchy, fast strokes. I, I don't think other people draw like this, especially when I draw demos of art. They're usually very well directed, but I don't know why. I don't, I'm not sure if this is a good method of drawing. I feel like I could be much more efficient with my strokes if I just thought about it a bit more, but maybe I'll try. Um, so even if I have a small indication that the thighs are going outward, it, it will show an indication that the stance is wide. Um, so the hoodie comes down a pretty low here. Okay. So here, I mean, I want open palms instead of fists because, um, because, uh, they're like about to do battle according to the commissioner, do battle on their computers. So like if they're going to type something. I don't want to overcomplicate the anatomy. Hmm. So how should this hand pose be? Open palm, pinky here. Which way the fingers angling? I can draw them as sticks first. That might help. Bring the thumb out. Yeah. Get the wrist a bit smaller here. Okay. Let's find the palm. And we'll find the fingers, we'll do my sticks. I guess it helps me think about bones first and then fleshing them out. Because then I feel like I can get the position a lot, uh, position there a lot faster. Every time I come up with something new for myself, I wonder if it's something commonly used among uh, um, artists. But. probably is. So what is the pose of the hand here? So thumb coming up this way. Where where are her fingers? Maybe this these can be bent a little bit more. Can bring the thumb down a little bit. Or bring the fingers up a little bit. So index, middle, ring, pinky. Not enough palm here. Where is the thumb? I don't want the hand to look too big either. I think the spacing in the fingers needs to be a little bit more condensed. Yeah, draw it as a big shape like a boxing glove, maybe first. And then we can find the fingers from there. Yeah, shortcuts, shortcuts for simple anatomy. We can thin out the uh, waist a little bit more. Posterior iliac crest. I need to figure out which one. Uh, I know medial and lateral for size of the bodies, but posterior and anterior, I don't quite remember. Um... I mentioned earlier not in uh, too much back arch, but now there's like not enough. I, I think there should be some. So I'm gonna tilt it like this. Just gonna tilt. Maybe skew. Okay. And the head looks a little bit 
blobby, like a two, maybe too round, but I'm not sure. I think the the V shape that I'm looking for with anime characters needs to be a little bit more prominent here as the head widens. But I think the whole thing's a little bit wide anyway, so I might take the whole thing and freeform it, squeeze it a little bit. I think that's, yeah, that looks a little bit better already. And then a little bit more back of the cranium. So kind of just making decisions quickly, allowing the sketch to evolve. Let's find the um, eyes now. Okay, so I remember two fifths up the head for anime characters' eyes, because they want big craniums, make them look like little cute babies. So. And here I do want her kind of looking at our opponent. So this one may be a little bit more sinister in the pose, in the, in the expression. The eyes are definitely off, so I think we need to adjust the center line. More cheek here. Round it out a little bit. I think too much about anime anatomy. People have to just have a certain style that they just kind of get it right, even without thinking too much about the anatomy. But I think too much. Let's go ahead and squeeze and flip horizontally again. Let's see what's going on with her head. I think that looks okay. Maybe bring the center line a bit more, bring the nose out a little bit more the nose out as part of the center line, I suppose. Um, okay. Okay, how much, what kind of smile do we want on this character? They, they both are like kind of like serious looking characters. I don't know if that's just because it's a VTuber model and with, they're expressionless right now, but I wonder what kind of pose to put here. Does this one have fangs? I think she does. Does she have fangs? I don't see any. So I don't know if I'm going to add them. I might ask the commissioner if, if she has strong fangs. She does have elf ears, which I'm seeing. So elf ears. Okay. Um, horns. Fangs. At this point, I think we can start doing a second pass because the anatomy is there. Could be better on this character still, but well, it's the anatomy is mostly there. I'm going to try to get it right on this character. Bigger head, maybe. Don't know. Head is a little bit big. We're gonna go uniform transform here. So I'm working at a decent pace. Which is the intention for this piece. I think I'm, I am gonna start a second pass now. Um, and start getting uh, the major forms and, and the clothes and the hair and stuff in there. So yeah, let's do that. So this is just the anatomy and I'm gonna stay in here. So I'm gonna actually layer number the passes. So if we can do more than three passes for this, it might have a really nice result with the line art. Um, but again, I'm gonna, the stuff that I'm learning with my personal pieces, like the Holy Family and the, my Catholic work, um, I'm gonna try to apply to this anime stuff, so. Okay, um, yeah, let's get in there. Still with the HP pencil. I'm gonna reduce the um, visibility of the references even more because they're kind of like too strong might be a little distracting I want it so that they're, they're there for me to look at but not like super strong I, I just want the general shapes so we're here we're gonna go call it pass two just call it number two and then we're gonna get in there with our smaller HP pencil brush and again, we're, we're, even though I want to experiment with doing more passes, we're still going to try to keep it to a minimum. And 
And then after this pass looks good, we're just gonna go in there, I think with my inking brush. I think we are gonna do three. Don't need to go overboard. So here I need to, I need to start slowing down my strokes. It doesn't have to be like perfect line art, but um, we're gonna start slowing down, focus on getting more intricate details. She does have, um, you know, start with that line, but oval pupils. If I keep them flat, it helps me, like, um, establish the position of the pupils. What do her eyebrows look like, or her eyelashes? That's why I have this extra layer here. Um, yeah, pretty pretty standard. Nothing uh, nothing unusual about them. Just a black line, and then got eyebrows. Okay, and then we're gonna start getting some hair in there. So starting from here, just the main center bang doesn't go too far down her forehead. It starts really high up, uh, like from the middle of her head, I guess, and then it stops like. Or at about eyebrow level, so we'll do that. Again, looking at the reference. Yeah, a couple... Oh, yeah, I'll join my own hotspot, why not? <laughs> um, okay, and then here, just gonna copy the bangs. It spreads out from here. Again, trying to focus on not undoing too much. What do her? What does her hair look like? It's not clear. It kind of just comes from the top middle, and then it looks like it just parted in the middle, and then it goes down wavy. Um, since this, we're going for a dynamic pose, um, we're gonna find a part in the hair, and then we're we're gonna let the hair flow flow back a little bit, flow up and back. So like this. And it does come to the front of her coat a little bit. Yeah, there's quite a few strands that come forward like that. Are her ears visible? Not really. So we're gonna bring some hair in front of the ears. Um, and then going down here, we got another blue strand. Um, down here. Let's get some hairs flowing the other way. Flowing in different directions. Well, I mean, her hair pretty much flows inward for the most part, right? So, um, don't need too much of the other the other way. There's just a few down in the center, so maybe down here we get some hair flowing the other way. Um, a little bit coming over the shoulder here, and a little bit coming down. So, like, we're, it's like we're creating locks of hair. I don't normally do this, but it makes sense. Okay. Just kind of layering the hair on. Hair tends to make the head look bigger. Getting some angled strokes on accident, but I guess it's fine. Um, again, want to keep it simple. I don't want to get too much contour in the head. Thinking of the way the hair is flowing to the other side. Um, I think this needs to be pulled up more towards the top of the head and get a little bit bigger for that center bang it's funny because i know bangs seems like a plural word but why is it called a why are these pieces of hair called bangs is it and is a singular word a bang that's what i'm wondering so here um there would be some strands coming this way for sure now the shape overall doesn't look good so i'm gonna mess with it i want to think of silhouette i've been focusing so much on um the individual strokes that I want to get the overall shape right first. It's one of the core principles of sketching is to get the shape. Um, so I shouldn't. I should zoom in a little. Bit, zoom out a little bit more, and then let's find. Let's just put these things in the right place. Her hair is not exactly long. And her arms up, so how would the hair like kind of flow over it? There wouldn't be too much hair in front. 
and this part here on the side of her cheek. Yeah, everything's kind of flowing in towards center. And her shoulder is exposed, just covered by a little bit of hair. So um, let's just start finding the other pieces now. The neck. Again, I, I want to keep this simple, even though we have an anatomy layer below it. Um, we have that collar now, kind of comes down in a V shape. Doesn't go all the way down the neck, so it's kind of like starts from high on the neck and then comes down. And then we have, what is this? A little emblem. Looks like a metal, um, just kind of guess the shape here. I don't really know. It looks like a bird, a small bird. So, um, comes down a little bit here. And comes down, how far down the chest? Like, uh, yeah, um, maybe like the middle of the sternum. Like, I think right here is about right. And then we'll bring it forward a little bit. So I'll just kind of draw that bird. And then with little wings. And then a tail, I think. Yeah, a little tail. I think it's a bird. Haven't really taken a good look at studying this uh, model yet, but I think we're getting somewhere. I think that we can get the eyes set a little bit wider apart. Anime nose, just a little dot, yeah. I usually don't do little dots, I usually kind of do lines, like small lines, just to indicate that there's some directional directionality of the top or underside of the nose. And then simple excited expression here. Okay. Um, now that I'm seeing it, I, sh I think I can pull them back a little bit. Bring these two back. And maybe the angle of the mouth too could change. Let's see. Maybe bigger too. No, smaller. Is that okay? Yeah, I think that was a... Well, actually, no. Let's try again. Not too much bigger. We don't need that. That's okay. Now... Yeah, I think we can adjust now the angle of the... Cheeks. Maybe the cheekbone higher up. I don't want too strong cheekbones. Don't want them too weak either. Okay. A little bit more angle in this cheek here. Bring it up further. And her ears are not visible. So the hair looks kind of a mess right now. But I'll take it slow and I'll get it right. Let's take it slow. So we want to think of locks of hair, I guess, right? I don't know. I'm not very good at this at hair. Yeah, the, having that extra lock here kind of folding back and down creates a layered look to the hair, which the hair does have. So I think that's important. Bangs, bangs. So it kind of flows into the side and then she has some like side locks that go inward like near her face actually. And they don't go down very far, just kind of like to her toward her chin. So keep that in mind. And then I guess we'll on this side we'll just kind of bring them around towards the chin too. They don't again, they don't really flow very far. Okay. So I think we're good here. We're just going to go down back to the clothes. And then going down her shoulder, um, how baggy is it? Is it tight around the shoulder? No, it's not. It's pretty loose around the whole thing. It's actually kind of like a yeah, wide sleeve with a little bit of a cuff at the end and then fingerless gloves. So with that design in mind, we'll keep going. And then I, I, I want to do the clothing folds pretty well here. But again, I don't want to take too long. Uh, where is her armpit? Like right there. 
So we want to think of, I just watched a video on this, tension and compression points. Tensions would be like the corners, the elbows, the shoulder, and things falling from there. And then compression points where um, the sleeve would be folding. So let's try to use like straight lines for this and kind of solve it. Um, Cause, okay. Yeah, wide round sleeve, it would wrap around the back of the hand actually because not it doesn't the sleeve goes past the wrist towards the back of the hand so we'll stay faithful to that we'll go around the back of the hand and then kind of come down we'll use straight lines to to kind of think of like the vectors of where the um sleeve might go and it's a wide material so we'll kind of like widen it out like that Same here, I'm gonna go around her wrist. I guess I'll start with the cuffs and then kind of pull things back. I think it would be kind of curving back a little bit. To, yeah, like that. So, around there. And then, what about here? I think, yeah, using that um, side of the brush, side of the pencil might be good in this scenario. It would tense up in a couple of places. Um, tension point on the armpit, probably. So, like there. Oh, I don't know why I was switched to eraser there on accident. Um, again, don't want to overcomplicate it too much. Just want to get the basic folds. So here, she's pushing her arm out. This, everything would kind of get pulled back. Uh, I want to think of the folds and then it splits in the middle almost like it was supposed to be zipped up and then but from the top so it splits in the middle um, around her chest but slightly over it also so kind of like over here and then where would this flow it kind of flows straight down into long tassels so let's do that and then let's move the tassels so we're kind of gonna have this angle of like left to right and then maybe you kind of fold this a little bit more too like it's kind of defying gravity a little bit the, ma the material seems thick at the top and then thin at the bottom so we'll let it thin out and then there's another one here a little tassel in the middle a very thin one that I see, yeah. So, but it would be coming from a different location than what I just drew, though. So it would kind of be like from here. And then these tassels are quite long. They go all the way down to her knees. So we'll, for this one, we'll just put it off of the canvas. We'll bring it all the way down. And then we're just going to follow the anatomy here. tight fitting around here and then I think the shirt there's a small belt and then that's either shorts or a skirt I can't really tell um, I should ask actually so two questions I have is uh, shorts or skirt just write it down skirt and what was the question I had with this one I don't remember getting some text though that I need to address I'm gonna copy this one too and we'll bring it to high opacity um, I don't know I've done this model oh if she has fangs or not so that's a question so fangs oops we're here on pass two then we want to ask fangs and I think we'll stop there. Um, we got some pretty decent progress on the second pass, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, flip horizontally because the top of the cranium looks a little bit weird, a little wide. So I think I'm gonna make an adjustment there. Um, also the position of the left eye looks a little bit weird here, or maybe it's not the, it's more of the, the cheekbone to the 
to the forehead. Maybe the head needs to be a little bit wider on this side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep playing it. Again, mirroring back and forth helps me a lot. Um, it, you know, it, it always saddens me that, you know, how advanced I, I'm not. Um, and like problems that I wish I could solve like on the get-go, but we're evolving as an artist. I just wish I could be more efficient sometimes and know what I'm doing rather than having to fix things all the time. Um, but something definitely looks off with the hair here. I might bring it in a little bit. But I'm thinking out loud and this process is going to take a while anyway. So um, uh, we'll just take a break because I got to address these texts. Let's go ahead and squeeze and mirror. That's very satisfying to squeeze and mirror. So we'll stop here and I'll talk to you guys later. God bless. Bye bye.